Hello and welcome back to the Tea Time Diaries where we invite some of your favorite cricketers and talk to them not just about cricket, not just about this short format but also about a lot of other things. And joining me today is the genius all-rounder from Australia that almost all global leagues want on their side at literally any cost. Shane Watson, how are you? Uh, very good. You're very kind. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're very kind for taking the time out. Shane, I'd like to start off by asking you to tell us a bit about this format. You're playing this format for the very first time. Mm. What has your experience been uh, like so far? Yeah, look, it's, oh, it's been a lot of fun. Um, uh -huh. you know, most, well, first of all, to be able to have so many world-class players playing this tournament shows that um, yeah, there's so much interest in, in the T10 concept. That's right. um, and and it's, you know, every, every team that you play against has got you know, a lot of world-class players in it. So, okay. um, and from my personal experience, it's, oh, it's, an, it's, well, it's a concentrated version of T20. So it, it really puts, a, of puts your skills under pressure um, from a batting and bowling point of view right. you know, instantly as soon as you get out there right. um, from ball one. So, from ball one, you've got to start yeah, um, the action. Okay, a lot of people are saying this format is more of a batsman game. It's, it is a lot to offer to the batsman, not so much to the bowler. Would you first of all agree to this? Yeah, it's definitely a batsman's <laughs> game. Um, yeah, with the scores that we've seen as well, like even um, in this tournament alone, like to think that, well, to think that someone can get 74 of 16 balls like Shazad did That's in, a, crazy. in our first game. It's, but, but the bowls will, uh, will adapt. The more they play, the more they'll have more of an understanding about how to do damage. Has your team adapted? You guys have had a well, few games already. We're adapting also. as quick as we can. <laughs> Which player would you say stands out when it comes to performing like explosively, who's like a genius uh, for this particular format? Oh, look, Any player that impressed you? Oh, look, I, w I would have always said Andre Russell uh, uh -huh. with you from a batting uh -huh. point of view. Obviously, he can go from ball one and has done it pretty consistently uh, you know, in T20 tournaments. Right. But obviously, right. Nicholas Poran has done incredibly Nicholas well the last few been games. Nicholas really well. Shane, uh, now you see a lot of changes happening in cricket. Uh, a lot of people are saying test cricket is dying. Shorter formats are like taking over. But what kind of future do you see uh, for cricket or what kind of direction do you see cricket taking in the near future? Say like five or so years down the lane. Yeah, I just think international cricket just needs to have context with every every game and every mm -hmm. series that's being played. That's right. Um, you know, that's why the, the test cricket championship that needs to that should have happened probably five years ago. It should have. They were um, discussing it, I don't know what they've talked about <laughs> it a long time ago yeah. and it was always in the pipeline but it, it never was. actually came to fruition. Yeah. Um, so they missed the boat with that. You can see all these 2020 leagues, for example, or T10 leagues, there's something riding on every game. So that's the reason why, one, the players love playing it, yeah. um, but two, the fans love watching it. Exactly. Um, and that's why yeah, the T20... And you're getting sponsors also very interested to come on board. So I've it looks like they've got like all the ingredients in it. I agree. So it's just international cricket has to be, there has to be context to every game, not just a, a token series for the yeah. sake of the Future Tours program. And yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it's become, right? Studies. Just for the FTPs? It's crazy. Yeah, it has they've become got a, They've got a... Stop that yeah. and realise what's happening. Yeah. And because before you know it, if they don't, if they don't make a, the adjustments like right now. Okay, now you've played like all formats. You've succeeded also in all formats. You hold so many records. Which format of the game do you enjoy as a cricketer? Oh, look, Test cricket's always been the ultimate. Mm. Um, yeah, and that's probably out of all formats that there's one that I probably didn't achieve all that I wanted. Mm. Um, but you know, I was incredibly fortunate to play as many Test matches and. Um, have some success that I that I did, but as a cricketer, the the ultimate test is test cricket. It is from a physical, mental, um, personal point of view. It's a, it's a true test of what you're made of. That's right. Um, so that is the ultimate. There's no question. Um, but now, you know, I'm just incredibly fortunate to be playing, um, you know, T20 cricket and still being able to play at this stage of my career. And you like um, like hard property. Every franchise wants you. I'm not so sure about. I'm not so sure about that. If I'm able to perform, then um, it's nice. I can contri contribute, but. That's a beauty of being able to you know, play in so many incredible tournaments around the world. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. Mm. You know, so let's move on now to slightly lighter side of life, so to speak. Mm. We've uh, been told that you're a fan of Japanese cuisine, is that right? Yeah. You are. Okay, and we've also been told that you're a pro when it comes to using chopsticks. Is that also right? You so are with like I'm experienced at using <laughs> chopsticks when I'm a pro. Okay. <laughs> right, so what we're going to ask you to do is we've got these marsh baby marshmallows. Yep. And you have 20 seconds on the clock to pick marshmallows using the chopstick and transfer them from this tray onto this bowl right here. Yep. And each marshmallow is worth a point. And we've got a few chocolates in there which are quite slippery <laughs> to pick using a chopstick. And those carry five points. Okay. We had Rashid Khan before you came in. And he, he well, it was his very first time using chopsticks. Oh, well, that's but challenging. He, yeah, did you no, but he, he did quite well. I mean. Did he? Yeah, I'll tell you what he scored after we see what you scored. Okay. <laughs> Alright, start. Ah, you're aiming for the chocolate. Oh, okay. 
I can already see you beating Rashid at least. These ones are difficult to get. Oh my god. Okay. Maybe I can already ask you this stuff. I don't think anyone can <laughs> get anywhere close to your score. How are we doing on time? Oh my gosh. So you stop. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm not even going to bother counting those. No, no, You've like almost transferred. I had to go out. for the big ones. You went for the big ones. And, and how did you? I mean, I find them really slippery. No, I just got to get in the right. And even you know the fish sushi, I have to like poke my chopsticks in those. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you definitely beat and you've got three chocolates, so that's 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Almost 30. I do love my Japanese food, so I'm going to practice. <laughs> you do, yeah. that's evident. Yeah. Rashid was nowhere close to you, he managed to score 10 points. That's good for his first time using yeah. chopsticks. If I had to do that first time, I'd have got nowhere near that again. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so now Shane, let's really quickly move on to the last segment, which is like our little super over. We'll throw six uh, mind-challenging questions at you. They're tricky questions. I'm sure they will be. Uh, and we'll see how you perform. What relation is your niece's brother to you? <laughs> <laughs> this is actually really simple. What relation is your niece's brother to you? My nephew. That's right. Niece's brother's your nephew. Yeah. What word becomes shorter when you add two letters to it? Tricky, is it? Oh, yeah. It's simple. What word becomes shorter when you add two letters to it? Add letters short shorter. So no, tell me. You have to tell me. <laughs> Short. Add e r to get shorter. <laughs> What Very is good. heavier? What is heavier? <laughs> some of these questions, when I hear the answers to some, yeah, I no, get that's too old. obvious. That's too obvious, I know. Uh, so, what is heavier, a kilogram of stones or a kilogram of feathers? They're both the same way. That's it. So we've scored our very first point. Yeah. Which letter of the English alphabet flies, stings, and sings? So, which letter of the English alphabet flies, stings, and sings? B. That's right. So that's our second point right there. Okay, so you participate in a race and overtake the person who's holding the second position. What position are you in? Overtaking the person who holds the second position. That's right. You're first. You're no, second. No, you second. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I won't consider that a point, would you? No. Nah. No. Nah. <laughs> got it wrong. I'd say your last one is how <laughs> many two cent stamps are there in a dozen? How many two cent stamps? Are there in a dozen? A dozen. That's right. So we scored how many? Three points. Four. Did I get the first one as well? Oh yeah. Okay, fine. No, no, you haven't done bad. <laughs> Four to six. Four, Not six bad. I think yeah. you beat Rashid Khan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Shane, that's all we have for today. Thank you so much. You've been very kind. You've joined us. And I really appreciate that. My pleasure. No worries.